you. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to thank the organizer committee to give me this opportunity to present uh, my work, in particular, what I've discovered about cream formulation impact on topical administration of engineered colloidal nanoparticles. I will start looking at the, the critical points for the nanoparticles permeation through the human skin when uh, we are considering a cutaneous administration. Um, when we want to test the nanoparticles uh, permeation, we have to keep in mind, uh, firstly, their size, then the surface properties and shapes, and also their interaction with the biological structure of the skin. Indeed, in the literature, it's known that just nanoparticles smaller than 40 nanometers are able to penetrate the stratum corneum, that is the limiting step, uh, the, limiting, uh, the limiting step in the human skin layers. Human skin is composed by three principal layers Starting from the skin surface, we have the stratum corneum, so the strongest barrier. Then we have the dermis, and then the, uh, the epidermis, and then the dermis. To overcome the stratum corneum, nanoparticles can use two different routes, the intercellular or the transcellular one. To study this administration route, I've selected iron oxide nanoparticles coated with an amphiphilic polymer that have a wide application landscape since they can be used for diagnosis and therapy. For diagnosis, because they have a, an organic core, an iron oxide core, so they can be used as a contrast agent for the MRI, and also they can be used for therapy since they can be functionalized on the polymeric surface with antibodies, protein, or drugs. And the people of my lab published a lot of paper using these uh, nanoparticles. The aim of this project is uh, studying the possibility of this kind of nanoparticles to permeate through the human skin layers, also once added to a semi-solid formulation. And this study is composed by two steps. The first one are the in vitro permeability studies, and the second one is the in vivo experiment on the living mice. I will start looking at the nanoparticle preparations. This is how the nanoparticles are uh, synthesized. It's a solvothermal decomposition method, a very high temperature that allows us to obtain iron oxide core, named MNP, um, with a mean diameter of 12 nanometers dispersed in organic solvent. To make these nanoparticles a functional vector in the biological fluids, uh, I cover this core with an amphiphilic polymer, the PMA, that intercalates its hydrophobic chains with the chains of the oleic acid, that is the surfactant of the core, and uh, the polymer also shows uh, on the external environment its hydrophilic backbone, allowing the nanoparticle stability in water. So with these uh, two steps, we obtain a core shell system named PMNP, stable in water, that I characterized using uh, TIM microscopy, zeta potential, and dynamic light scattering that shows a um, hydrodynamic diameter of these nanoparticles, about 30 nanometers. For the in vitro experiments uh, to study the permeability of these nanoparticles, I used the Franz diffusion cell that is a well-established technology system composed by a donor compartment in which uh, we can put the formulation. In my study, I tested the nanoparticles aqueous suspension or nanoparticle cream. And at the bottom, there is a receptor compartment from which we can withdraw what is passed from the donor compartment. And between these two chambers, there is a thickness in which is uh, fixed uh, a membrane. In our experiment, we use the human membranes made of or stratum corneum and epidermis, so the first two layers of the skin, or made of just stratum corneum. And the aim of this study is uh, to quantify how many nanoparticles are accumulated into these membranes and how many nanoparticles pass through it, so are collected in the receptor compartment. 
For the detection of the nanoparticles, we use the ICPOs that allows us to quantify the iron amount in the samples. These are the results about the permeation of the nanoparticles in suspension, in which uh, you can see the nanoparticles passage, so the how many nanoparticles we find in the receptor compartment after 24 hours of treatment in the presence of membranes made of stratum cornum and epidermis or just stratum cornum. And it's evident more passage of the nanoparticle when we are, we are using just stratum cornum as a membrane. And these data are compared with the blank, so the iron present in the, into the skin itself. So having seen that these nanoparticles can permeate through the human skin, we also decided to quantify the accumulation of these nanoparticles into these membranes. And the, the data, the, the graph on the left shows uh, in a higher amount of the nanoparticles when we are using uh, a membrane made of stratum corneum and epidermis and less in the case of just stratum corneum. And we decided to study more deeply uh, these data going to trypsinizing, so uh, to separate uh, the stratum corneum and epidermis and going to quantify the amount uh, in the graph on the, on the right uh, the amount of the nanoparticles in the stratum corneum and in on just the epidermis, epidermis where it's clear the contribution of the, epi in, of the epidermis in the nanoparticles accumulation. And so we decided to formulate these uh, nanoparticles with the cream. What I did was to make a very concentrated nanoparticle suspension that I formulate with the water in oil cream, and I made the, sa the same experiment, so the Franz diffusion cell to test the permeability. And uh, in this graph, it's evident the, in red the um, uh, more nanoparticles permeation when uh, the nanoparticles are formulated with the cream, mainly in the earlier times. In fact, that after 24 hours, the, the trends are comparable, but it's evident the improvement of the cream in the nanoparticles permeation. After 24 hours, we also decided to uh, analyze this skin treated, um, analyze it with the TAM and SAM microscopy to find the nanoparticles presence in the skin layers. And these images shows show, starting from the, the red um, square, the nanoparticles presence uh, in the corneocytes uh, that are in the stratum corneum, the nanoparticles presence also in the um, desmosome in the um, blue square uh, that are component of the viable epidermis, and also you can see the nanoparticles presence in the second line um, the nanoparticles are intercalated between the collagen fibers in the deeper layers of the epidermis. So we can conclude that we can find the nanoparticles after this treatment in all the skin layers treated. The, the last step that we decided to study was an in vivo experiment made in a collaboration with the immunology expert of Milano Bicocca and um, to test on a living mice this uh, nano cream. Uh, first, it was necessary to label these nanoparticles with a dye to follow their destiny uh, once they are applied on the mis on the mice skin. And uh, it, um, it was possible to by a func functionalization of the polymeric surface with uh, a carbofluorexane that allows us to obtain a fluorescence emission uh, from our nanoparticles. And what I did was, as I said before, make a very concentrated nanoparticles label suspension that I add with the water in oil cream. And I applied this nano cream um, to the skin of previously shaved mice for 24 hours. After this uh, treatment, the mice are sacrificed and the treated skin uh, is analyzed by flow cytometry. We also decided to analyze the draining lymphonodes to evaluate the possible transport of the nanoparticles via the lymph. These are the results of the in vivo experiments. 
in which on the left uh, you can see the, um, a nanoparticles uptake by the dermal resident immune cells when these nanoparticles are applied in a form of nanocream on these mice. And uh, it's not evident the uptake uh, at the bottom, <laughs> uh, the uptake of, uh, of these nanoparticles by uh, the lymph nodes. Why? When we administer these, uh, the same kind, the kind of nanoparticles by a subcutaneous administration, we see an uptake of uh, the immune, uh, resident immune dermal cells of the skin, and also we can see an uptake by the lymph nodes. So we can conclude that uh, when we administer these nanoparticles in a form of a nanocream, they have a local distribution. And, uh, and when we are administering these kind of nanoparticles by a subcutaneous administration, we, can, we have a systemic diffusion because we find them uh, also in the lymph nodes. In conclusion, uh, I demonstrated that uh, these kind of nanoparticles, iron oxide nanoparticles coated with an amphiphilic polymer can permeate the stratum cornum and the epidermis, and they can be also accumulated into the epidermis. Combining uh, nanoparticles amphiphilic character with the cream formulation, we improve the intradermal penetration of the nanoparticles. And this makes a very promising nano cream for topical application in local therapies. I would like to thank my group, the group that are collaborating with this study, and you for the attention. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? When you apply these nanoparticles with iron oxide onto the skin, what happens in the long term? How is being flushed out? How is being metabolized? Mm -hmm. How often can you uh, use it? I mean, you, c you can't load your skin with iron oxide nanoparticles yes. endlessly. You, you mean the toxicity, mean the yeah, toxicity yeah, sure, or I mean, by distribution? Otherwise, you turn into a magnet, an iron man. <laughs> Yes, th there are uh, a lot of studies about the biodistribution of toxicity of these nanoparticles in vivo, and they are safe at the concentration tested in terms of micrograms of the dosage form of these nanoparticles. They are safe and they have a biodistribution in the main organs in the body. Do you realize that this is until I die and after dying I put these nanoparticles on my skin and nothing happens? No, in the, in the skin or in the body in general? <laughs> in the skin. <laughs> no, they can be used for a lot of uh, application. <laughs> Any more questions? Well, thank you very much thank once again. <laughs>